Well, I never thought I'd be making this video. You know Cloud Retainer, that bird god that lives on a mountain and likes to cook and raised Ganyu and Shenha? Uh, well, she's playable now, and I'm pretty confused because she's hot. Except for her hands. Bird attraction conundrum or not, I am still here to break down all the details on Shan Yun. Yes, her name is Shan Yun in the Mortal Realm. All the intricacies of her kit, play style, best teammates, weapons, artifacts, constellations, you name it, I'm going over all of them. And this is gonna be a spicy one because Hoyo has yet again hit us with a character that does something completely unique to any other character in the game. Let's get started. For this entire video, unless otherwise specified, my Shan Yun will be at level 90, holding her signature weapon, Crane's Echoing Call. She's on four-piece Viridus and Venerer, Constellation Zero, and her talents are 888. So Shan Yun is a five-star Animo Catalyst support character with some extremely unique attributes that she brings to the table. So let's get started with her normal attack. For her normal, she shoots out these really cool gusts of wind in a projectile, kind of like Yanfei or Kokumi, but to be honest, they are pretty average and we're not gonna be using them too often. Now here's where things get fun. Shan Yun's skill description is a bit of a doozy, so let me put it into my own words. Once you use it, she jumps into the air a little bit and goes into the transmogrification state. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking naming that either. The active jumping does a little bit of animation damage but it can only hit the same target once what the transmogrification state lets you do is three small things it lets you use the skill two more times leaping higher and farther with each jump and yes you can use these second and third jumps in midair it also causes shan yun to sort of glide around very fluidly in the air and she won't take fall damage so long as the state is active if you don't use another jump within a short amount of time the state will end and you go splat as long as you can see the skill indicator not on cooldown you're still in the state but even after the last jump there does seem to be a lingering effect on taking no fall damage i'm not sure on the tell though so anytime during this day if you click the attack button cloud retainer will do a special plunging attack which hones in on a target enemy smashes down in her bird form doing aoe animo damage with the more jumps you do the more damage it does by the way these jumps are called sky ladder in the description it's not that important but thought i'd throw it in the special plunge attack also has no fall damage from certain heights so you can swoop down from pretty high but not too high okay well if you choose to not do the plunge attack and just gracefully come back down to earth, the cooldown is decreased by three seconds. It'll take some time to get used to this skill, but it is unbelievably fun to explore with Shan Yun just leaping, jumping, flying around at mock speed. For my explorers out there, I found if you let Shan Yun touch the ground between each sky ladder jump and you see this pretty green indicator under her, it makes her next sky ladder jump go way farther than just mashing the skill. So obviously this is a very fun and unique skill, but her burst is where she proves to be an extremely powerful and unique support. Shan Yun's burst stars gather at dusk, does AoE animal damage on cast, heals the entire party in a decent sized burst, but also summons the Star Wicker, this cute mechanical bird to follow around the team. While the Star Wicker is out, it heals the entire party continuously, but also allows your team to jump higher and perform enhanced plunging attacks. Yes, a character that allows anybody to do plunge attacks anytime. You can only perform eight plunge attacks with the Star Wicker though. After eight plunge attacks, you'll no longer be able to jump higher than usual. I'd like to note that her heal scales with attack. Thank God, no split scaling, and this is a perfect time to go into her Ascension 4 passive. Consider the Adeptus in her realm. This passive buffs the low high plunge damage of your teammates by 200% of Shan Yun's attack, up to 9,000 bonus damage, or if Shan Yun can hit 5k attack. But the bonus damage can only be applied to one single enemy per plunge attack. So with that, it should now be a apparent that Shan Yun is an attack stacker like Shen Ha. Her heal scales with attack and the plunge attack bonus damage she grants also scales off her attack. So this passive is what makes Shan Yun really stand out as not just a plunge enabler, but also a plunge buffer. Her other passive, Gale Feather Pursuit, will boost the crit rate of allies' plunge attacks only based on how many opponents she hits with her skills plunge attack. The max of hitting four enemies will grant a 10% plunge crit buff. This is cool, but it's a little bit inconsistent. It's definitely not as important as her other passive and finally her adventure passive is increased gliding speed very appropriate for talent order i would level up her burst first 100 the damage is negligible but we want that heal to be as big as it can get her skill talent only raises damage so raise it if you like and her normal attack is not necessary at all but hey don't let me stop you now that her kit has been explained, it is time for a crash course on plunge attacks. First off, plunge attacks have a lag animation when hitting the ground, making it feel a little slow. But we can cancel this animation or lag by dash canceling. So dashing as soon as you hit the ground and jumping immediately once you're dashing. Pole arms cannot dash cancel for some reason, but they can cancel the lag with a normal attack. So once you hit the ground, input a normal attack, and then of course you can cancel the normal attack with a jump. These little tips are gonna maximize your plunge damage and Shan Yun is 
all about plunge damage. So I think it's pretty important to put in here. Back to class. Not every plunge attack is created equal. Tons of characters share the same base damage on plunge attacks, but there's a few differences like Shao being higher or Diluc being the highest in the game. You can find the chart here. Bow and Catalyst characters do the least amount of damage, with Swords and Polearms tied for second, and Claymores do on average the most plunge damage. And finally, characters have three different plunge attack multipliers. First is low and high damage. If you jump very high, you do more damage. If you jump low or plunge almost immediately after jumping, you get the lower multiplier. But what is just plunge damage, you may ask? This damage will happen if you fall onto an enemy or hit them while you're still in midair. So the closer you are to the enemy, the more damage you'll do. Clay Claymores have a bigger hitbox when coming down with their plunge, so it's easier for them to hit this bonus damage. That concludes our class here today on Plunge Attacks. So now I want to share some tips that you need to know to play Shan Yun optimally. First off, her skill, especially when doing all three jumps, takes a long time and doesn't do an absurd amount of damage. And it generates the same amount of energy particles whether you use the skill once or all three times. So in the heat of battle to get her skill out quick for energy, her burst off and then get out in the fastest time possible, I don't recommend using it two or three times. I go more into why she doesn't do a ton of damage in the artifact section, so wait up for that. The second is piggybacking off the first, energy recharge. Shan Yun with out her burst is sort of a sitting duck. She wants her burst up off cooldown every single time to give the team what they want, their plunge ability and healing. So getting as much ER on her as possible is going to be very important. On high animal particle producing teams, she may only need around 130% ER, but on teams with no other animals, she might be pushing near 200% ER requirements. Shanyan's artifacts are actually pretty simple. As with any Animo character and a big contributor to why Animo is so good in Genshin in the first place, Viridus and Venerer will be her go-to. Any team involving elements besides Animo or Geo are gonna want VV. You'll see in the team section just how many elements Shanyan is working with. Even on a seemingly Animo-only team, such as Xiao, Faruzan, Farina, and Shanyan, Farina's damage is so good that running Viridus and Venerer is still recommended. But there will be some team comps where swirling elements for Viridus and Venerer actually isn't very important. So on teams like this, no bless and song of days past will be her best option to support the team's damage even further now in a tier slightly below the rest i'd say four piece ocean who clam is all right but i recommend song and two piece two piece combinations of attack energy recharge and i guess even healing bonus could be fine but i of course recommend viridus and venerer no bless or song in almost every situation now what artifact main stats should we be aiming for attack 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 will maximize the plunge damage buff while buffing her heals so it's the obvious choice but this is only if you can get enough er for her through subs and her teammates if not er attack attack is going to be very normal and extremely good and also on teams perhaps with farina where you feel you need even more healing a healing bonus circlet is not a weird pick at all on teams where she needs a ton of er and is running favonius codex she may even need to run er attack crit rate for more consistent favonius energy procs something like attack percent animo damage bonus and crit is not going to be worth raising her personal damage to lower the whole team's plunge damage bonus i just think at lower constellations we shouldn't be focusing on shan yun's damage unless you're just trying to have fun so for substats the most important stats are going to be attack percent and energy recharge crit rate and damage won't hurt to raise her personal damage and a bit of the fav proc rate we just talked about and flat attack or even elemental mastery is useful albeit worse than attack percent so while we go over Shan Yun's best weapons, just keep in mind the two things that she wants above anything else. It's attack and energy recharge. Crane's Echoing Call is her signature weapon and it's pretty stacked for her. Insane base attack, attack percent substat, and it gives a plunging attack bonus and restores energy to her every time someone plunge attacks. This is straight up her best weapon. There's no real discussion to have. So get it if you want to crack out your Shan Yun, but I don't recommend pulling this weapon for any other character in the game except her. Other five stars like Skyward Atlas, Memory of dust or even cash flow supervision are all okay they have high base attack grant even more attack yes but they do not give shan yun any er whatsoever which will make her energy requirements that much harder to hit so these are totally viable but just make sure you got enough er going into four stars and below much like how hoyo blessed the older players with festering desire for farina oath sworn eye is an old event weapon and it is absolutely amazing on shan yun high base attack for a four star it's an attack percent substat and it grants a ton of er after using a skill for those of you who have it rejoice because it is super good but if you don't i'm sorry let's move on prototype amber and each favorite is 
is also quite lit on Shan Yun. The base attack is decent. The HP percent sub isn't really useful, but it grants energy to Shan Yun after bursting and a little extra party-wide heal. Prototype Amber is even stronger on teams with Farina since that extra healing means faster fanfare stacks. So it's nothing out of this world, but it has a lot of useful things for her. You may have been thinking this is an easy Fav Codex character. And for some teams, she will absolutely need to run Fav since it will grant her the most energy possible, but the base attack is quite low and it grants no other bonus attack. So her buffs are not gonna be as big with Fav, but her burst consistency may just be what she needs to operate properly, good weapon. Also, Hakushin Ring on a few of her interesting teams is actually really solid. You get energy recharge as a high base attack and it boosts the team up. Finally, Thrilling Tails, the three star weapon. An R5 Thrilling Tails grants a massive 48% attack to a teammate. This buff actually makes up for its very low base attack, but once again, ER is going to be a big problem. On teams where Animo energy is flying everywhere, like Shao, Farazan, Shan Yun, she can most likely use Thrilling Tails to great effect, but on a team that isn't generating a ton of energy, especially Animo particles, it may be hard to get her the energy she needs. But if you can get her a ton of ER, Thrilling Tails is very good. Shangyun has some sick teams that enable some crazy comps, but let's start with the obvious one, Xiao teams. Xiao loves having a fellow Animo to generate more Animo particles for him, and of course, boost up his plunge damage even more. And her healing never hurt anyone either. Xiao can go sicko mode on hyper carry teams like with Xiao, Faruzan, and Shangyun, with the last slot working best with either Bennett or Farina. They're both massive damage amplifiers in their own right, so with this squad, Xiao is bound to pop off. When using Bennett though, changing Shangyun to Song of Days past or noblesse is the play. Farina's damage is high enough that staying on VV is probably worth it. And on a team like this with tons of animal allies, your ER requirements may be as low as 130%. All right, no more stalling. You've probably heard the rumblings of the Deluke comeback, and I am here to tell you, it's true. Where Deluke's burst and skill have fallen off as time goes on, still to this day, he has the highest plunge multiplier in the entire game. So we obviously want to give him a go with Shan Yun. Deluke, Farina, Bennett C6, and Shan Yun are an absolute monster combo. Just look at the damage on your screen right now, bro. It's nuts. If you don't have C6 Bennett, Deluke does infuse his own autos with Pyro after bursting, but C6 Bennett is much better here. Anywho, Shan Yun's heals are great for Farina's fanfare stacks, and you can raise them up pretty quick. Go watch my Farina guide if you haven't yet. Bennett gives Pyro resonance, a massive attack buff, and even more heals, and infuses the on-fielder with Pyro to vape their plunges off of Farina's skill. Deluke with his massive multiplier is the best here, yes, but it is time for a shocking revelation. With Bennett C6, any sword, polearm, or claymore character can turn into a vaping, plunging carry, and put up some big numbers. I'm using Yujin here because she's one of my favorite characters who I've had triple crown since day one, so it's time to see her put up some big damage. These teams are not insane meta threats, but making your favorites actually pop off is super fun, and it's about fun at the end of the day. Hu Tao is also a massive fan of Shan Yun, an absolute winner from her comps, and she doesn't need Bennett to infuse her attacks with Pyro. You may know that Hu Tao C1 makes her feel way better since it makes her charge attacks cost zero stamina. She can dash cancel and start up another one fast. But C0 Hu Tao players can now cancel their charge attacks with a jump right into a fat pyro plunge attack. Of course, C1 and above Hu Tao's also love the plunge buff, but it is super nice to see C0 Hu Tao's getting a bit of an upgrade. Anyway, this team is sick. It takes everything Hu Tao loves to do already, like hit fat vape charge attacks, but adds in some vape plunge attacks into the mix too. Hu Tao with Xing Chou, Farina, and Shan Yun is extremely good, but if you don't have Farina, you can make this work with Bennett or Yelon instead without much of a hitch. Look, this is getting repetitive, but Ga Ming and Bennett himself are both really good options for this pyro vaping plunge so long story short, Pyro Plunge Vape is really good. Get creative, find your favorite. Keep in mind though, for all these teams above, energy is gonna be an issue for Shan Yun. So things like Favonia, Sword Farina, and ER Weapons, Sands, or both are gonna be necessary. I'm talking like 200 to 230% ER. So there's two more team comps I wanna go over now. And the first is anything Jean can do, Shan Yun can do too, except for Sunfire. Shan Yun and Jean are very interchangeable. They are animal healers that heal while they're off field. So really any of these teams you see using Jean, like these examples I'm showing here, can use Shan Yun instead. If you're a Jean aficionado or always wanted a Jean, Shan Yun can be a good replacement. Now, the last team comp I want to mention is pretty much anything you want. I'm talking Barbara plunge attack carry with Shang Ling. I'm talking Noel carry with Farina, another Geo character, reverse melt Shang Yun or Ayaka with Shang Ling. And one that I've actually been pleasantly surprised with is Yai Miko plunge aggravate. 
On this aggravate team in particular, there's a lot of downtime where everything's up. You've got Oz, Nahida skill, Yaimiko's turrets, and then you're just like, well, what now? Big Electro plunge attack is what? This comp is legitimately good, and I think it's a nice point to end off on just how creative you can get with Shanyun teams. For my bird brain individuals who are going crazy for Animal Mother, let's go over her constellation. As always, please keep in mind, I don't own these constellations. I was unable to test them. This is coming from my research and my experience of playing this game every single day for three years straight. Her constellation one grants her one extra skill charge. It's pretty basic, but I would argue it's not as good on her as it is on like Yaylon with her C1. It unfortunately doesn't do a ton of damage and it has a pretty long animation time, but it's effectively double the energy for her. It's all right, I'll give it a three out of five rating. Her constellation two in short, after using her skill, she gets a 20% attack bonus for 15 seconds, and the strength of her A4 passive plunge buff is double. This just straight up makes her teams do more damage. It's not anything earth shattering, but it is very good. I'll give it a 4.5 out of 5. Constellation 3 is her burst talent up by 3. It's not very useful. 2 out of 5. Her Constellation 4 heals the whole team depending on how many jumps of her skill she used. The more times she jumped, the more this heals. I honestly don't see this being too useful since she heals a decent amount already, and you don't really want to jump with her since it takes so much time. I'd give this like a 2.5 out of 5. Constellation 5 is her skill talent level up by 3. Once again, it's not great. 2 out of 5 stars. But now her C6. This is what can turn her into a DPS carry. We've all been waiting for it. This has two parts. One, for each time she jumps, the skill plunge damage will get a crit damage boost up to 70%. And two, when her burst is up, her skill does not have a cooldown. Meaning you could repeatedly jump, 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 plunge. She turns into Shao, all right? This is obviously very cool and it unlocks a completely different playstyle for her, but I don't see this rivaling any of the insane Constellation 6 hyper carries that we have, like Yaylon, Farina, or Ayaka, just to name a few. I think it's pretty cool. I give it a 4.5 out of 5. So go for her cons if you're a super fan, but I don't think they're necessary at all. So what are my honest thoughts on Sean Yun? I think she's an extremely fun and creative character that allows you to run these high damage comps that are extremely creative and different. They're plunge attack comps. We've never had anything like that before, but I do not think she is even close to a must summon for anybody. A lot of people are calling her niche and I don't exactly think that's fair to say because obviously plunge was niche before this because it was pretty much impractical and next to impossible to actually pull off if your name isn't Xiao. So of course it seems niche but now that she's in the game there's actually so many team comps that i just showed you that enjoy the plunge attack bonus you don't have to make the whole team focused around plunge attacks but it's honestly pretty useful and you can use it to like dodge attacks with the you know increased jump height and stuff like that so niche doesn't exactly seem fair because it's so new but i think a lot of people can utilize what she does i will say that with how unique she is enabling these plunge comps that are totally different i can see a lot of players just not wanting to mess with that and not wanting to add her to their rosters and also if you didn't notice already farina is a go-to on almost every single one of her comps so if you don't have farina you can obviously make shanyun work and you know do a lot of damage and run some cool comps but maybe keep that in mind if you have farina maybe that'll make you want to pull for shanyun more or you grab shanyun now and you try to get farina on the rerun because they synergize super well together Homies, that wraps up my complete Sean Yun guide. I think there's going to be some super saucy Sean Yun teams that come out within the next couple days or a week, and I will cover them live on my Twitch stream. So come through to the stream. It is always super fun. I'm streaming all the time, Genshin and more. You're not going to want to miss it. And hey, shout out to you guys supporting the YouTube, okay? Make sure you like the video. Make sure you drop a comment. Let me know if you're pulling Sean Yun or not. And drop a sub to the channel, baby. We're still on the way to 50K subs, okay? So get in early so you can say you were here before 50K subs and we pop off, all right? And then big shout outs to the patrons, okay? We've got Zik, Lancy, a Spangle, Sumi, Cloudy. I appreciate you all oh so very much. Rats, hey, shout outs to Rats, the patron as well. I appreciate you guys so much. Have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, everybody.